Hi everyone, Cullen here. I love lawyers and welcome to the LHL Story Series. This morning, I'm sitting with a true legend, Hayda Shakara from Justice Family Lawyers. How are you, Hayda? I'm feeling fantastic. Thanks for having me, Cullen. <laughs> no, thanks for coming to episode two. <laughs> it's a privilege. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. So obviously, we had episode one with um, James Dabchi from Makins and Dabchi, and we thought we'd um, follow it up with, um, you know, someone who needs no introduction. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, um, uh, you've had a, a, a luminous career so far, but also as a, an athlete as well. So we'll get into that. Mm. Um, as on that note, I'd like to ask, if you were to describe your life, as we always do, in terms of film titles, what would they be and why? My number one ultimate favourite movie is Gladiator. <laughs> oh, yeah, Maximus Decimus Meridius. Um, the scenes, the quotes, um, just that story of a man that's come from great heights, fallen, <laughs> and then re-risen, it's, um, it's really inspiring. So okay. that's what I'm, I, I think I would hope one day to kind of achieve those levels. The, the level of Gladiator. Yeah, definitely. Oh, and I like to think of myself as a bit of a combatant, a bit of a fighter. So that's why I like to relate to it. Are you not entertained? <laughs> <laughs> is this not why you are here? Absolutely. It is my ultimate dream one day to say that in open court. No. <laughs> I could just imagine that happening. Yeah, actually. I know. I just want to yell at the judge. Are you not entertained? <laughs> now, obviously, um, I love your some of your LinkedIn videos. Um, it's of you training um, for the Olympics and whatnot. You were a 2016 Olympian in mm. Taekwondo. Is that right? I'd yeah. love to know more about that. Um, well, I've been training in the sport for 20 years. Wow. Um, 2012, I tried to qualify for the Olympics. Um, it didn't work out for me. Um, I got to the final line and basically I wasn't able to cross it. So then I thought, you know what, I would go super hard for the next four years and aim for the 2016 Olympics. Um, and I was able to achieve that goal of mine, which was fantastic. And went to the Olympics and managed to compete there, fought with the world's best, um, and I finished off seventh there. So no medal for Australia, but nevertheless, um, it was one of those things that I'll never forget. And I think it's taught me a lot yes. about myself. Okay. It's helped me out with my career, um, and it's instilled a sense of discipline and drive within me that I think has transferred into my legal career. Okay, well that, that's what was gonna be my next question. Mm. What skills have you taken from Taekwondo mm. and actually brought to your legal career and wh which ones do you feel have really helped? Um, believe it or not, I'd say the biggest skill that I've come away with is the ability to suffer certain defeats, um, take certain losses, and bounce back from them and learn from those mistakes. Learn from mistakes, grow from them, and not be disheartened by failing. Uh, failing forward, in yeah, a sense. basically, yeah. So, you know, you look at Russell Crowe and Gladiator, and <laughs> he got everything taken away from him. But Absolutely. But he's managed to use that and utilise it to grow in, and develop personally. And I, th I think, you know, that little metaphor there, it... Um, Probably not to the same degree. Yeah, family, uh, career, <laughs> yeah. identity. But. No, probably not to the same degree, but, but it's, a, um, similar vein of it's a similar kind of philosophy, right? Um, you get used to dealing with really tough situations. It's a combat sport, Taekwondo. We've been doing it my whole life. Um, look, you go through tough moments. You go through injuries. You go through, um, you, you lose fights. Um, there's results that you, you, you are working towards that you don't achieve. Um, but eventually you just become immune to that and you just say, okay, I'm just gonna keep driving forward. And I think um, you need that type of resilience when moving forward into your legal career because there's gonna be a lot of speed bumps along the way. And you have to have a tough skin, right? Like yeah. a thick skin, yeah. as it were. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Fantastic, mm. fantastic. Oh, the next one I wanted to ask, and I know this is, um, it's not Taekwondo, but it's um, similar, like Bruce Lee once said, you must be shapeless, formless like water. Mm. You put it in the, teacup becomes the teacup you put it in the teapot becomes the teapot be like water my friend yeah is, that, is there someone that's given you a piece of advice or a mentor that's really helped you in your um, taekwondo or your legal career that has stood out um look a lot of people have helped me along my journey um 
I like to read a lot. Yes. I like to um, get knowledge from people that have been through similar experiences. Yes. So I've read a lot of biographies, autobiographies. Um, some of my favorite stuff would be reading around other sports stars as okay. well. Yes. Um, seeing what they've been through and it, all of that adds up. Like um, a big idol of mine is Muhammad Ali. Oh, um, float like a butterfly sting and like a bee oh it has to be <laughs> rumble my me. friend rumble <laughs> so you know the stuff that um, he did he endured he persevered through his mental state his mental capacity that's stuff that I really admire um, and you know he's got his famous lines he's a poet into his he's, onto his, he's own, that into so, his own yeah yeah he's you know he's an amazing character um and then later on to his career, he kind of, you know, settled down a lot and was very humble about his achievements. Um, so it really resonates with me. So, um, yeah, I'd say he's probably my number one idol. Yeah, fantastic. And what I loved about um, Muhammad Ali in particular is mm. that even before he was famous and big and good, he told everyone that he was the greatest. Oh, uh, yeah. He believed they couldn't it. shut him up. No, he believed it himself. Yeah. And I remember there's a story that a little girl came up to him and said, why do you tell people all this when it's not actually true? And he goes, it's true for me. Yeah. And I believe it. Yeah. And, you know, he, you know, it's that chicken of the egg. Did, was he the greatest because he believed it or was he always going to be the greatest because that was the... I don't think it matters, does it? Yeah. yeah. It's one of those things, yeah, you're right, but it doesn't matter because his mental state is that strong and that's, that's what I admire. You just kind of, you know, I'll get through whatever it is and... You know, he had so much self-belief and um, it really goes to show the power of believing in yourself and how far you can get. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. My next uh, question, this is um, one that was a bit interesting when I asked um, James Apache the same question. If you were to ex describe your role in law to a six-year-old, what would you say? Well, I, I, do, I, I work in family law, so <laughs> I think it'd be a little bit interesting to describe to a six-year-old. Um, I'd probably say something like, you know, I'm helping mum and dad um, resolve some of their problems that they may have and okay. adults argue sometimes and that's okay. And um, okay. I'm just helping them to resolve what they're trying to do. Yeah, I think that's in the simplest terms what I'd in say. In a nutshell, yeah. so you're just trying to help mum and dad. I'm like just that. trying to help people, you know, move on, move on with um, their lives so that they can both be happy. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Um, obviously, social media is a big thing right now. Mm. Um, and obviously there's that dichotomy between work and play mm. if there's one thing it doesn't have to be social media related that you'd make compulsory in the office and that you'd ban in the office what would it be ban in the office um <laughs> <laughs> okay uh i think um mobile phones are a massive distraction okay so i would uh if i could which i just know i wouldn't be able to enforce so there'd be no point in trying i would say <laughs> it's an know, unwritten rule yeah no mobile phones because okay. you know they're just buzzing you get a notification from your instagram from your boom. linkedin and there's a whatsapp group and they're sending memes and you know it just it, it's so easy just to get distracted from your work it is and um you know in the legal field you've got to be focused in you've got to know what you know you've got to get in the zone essentially and phones just really help you get distracted they bring they, you out of that immersion right that's right yeah and they satisfy that um element of your human nature that just wants to be distracted and your mind bouncing in different places so if there's anything that i could ban um it'd be phones yeah okay. and what would you make compulsory getting to work on time <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to have um, a 7.15 special everyone in, in the office. That's it. I want everyone in working time. It's, it's one of those things that I wish I could do, but you know what? Uh, I've got to be a little bit flexible, I of, think. Of course. <laughs> Keep your mind open to everything and attached to nothing. That's it. And let people surprise you. Now, obviously, you're very healthy yourself. Keep fit. I try, yeah. If you could redesign the food pyramid mm -hmm. with no dire consequences, what would it look like? Redesign the food pyramid. Um... I would probably eliminate meat from there, to be mm. honest. Oh, good, good. Um, I'm a vegetarian as well, so thank yeah. you. Yeah, well, I think it's, um, you know, I think the food pyramid's a bit of a scam, to be honest. Okay, yeah. that's good. The stuff that mm. they're putting on there and the amounts that you need, I just don't think it's necessary. What, what is it? What is it for meat? I think it's, it's two servings of meat or something two like that. Two servings of meat and I think um, you get your protein, right? That's the biggest... That's ridiculous. I think about it. Like, that is a lot of meat that's required. I think it's just... It's not sustainable. I think it's completely wrong. I'd also, uh, I'd also say, um, you know, the amount of carbohydrates is also probably too much as well. Um, for me, I don't eat breakfast. So are you on the fasting thing at the moment? Not, not, not um, 
strictly as per se, mm -hmm. but I just think um, you don't require breakfast. So I try and merge my breakfast with my lunch, um, probably for some time-saving reasons. Um, but also, I think it's a lot easier to operate on a stomach that is a little bit tighter, I would say as opposed to always trying to digest food. Well, that's because the blood rushes to your stomach, right? To get, that's right, yeah. They, they you say, can keep it up here, yeah. not in here. <laughs> <laughs> they always said the best time to do an exam is when you, you haven't eaten and they've got the air conditioner cranked on to really cold. Yeah. Because it's like, yeah. get this right. No, it's well, the same with work. You've got, to be, you've got to be hungry for it, right? Yeah, of So, course. you know, when you're doing your work, you've got to be hungry. That's I like that. Yeah, exactly. Very good. So, you've got to be hungry to achieve and a little bit hungry in the stomach, you know? Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, obviously, law is your profession, but uh, fintech is becoming the big thing, and obviously, um, apps. Everyone has a good app idea. What would be your great big app idea? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if I want to share this on the show. <laughs> oh my goodness, we can put a sensor or a blur up if it's something that we can't talk uh, about. I think I th I've got a great idea. I think it's going to be massive, but I just don't know how it would work. Okay. Do you want to know about it? I'd, we'd love to know about it. My idea is um, for social a new social media platform, right? Okay, I'm um, hearing you on FM. But instead instead of it being a um, something that people post up on, it's an actual platform where you share basically your phone. So people can go through what you're texting, what, you, what your photos are, what everything. So it's like a... <laughs> so no privacy. It's basically a hack, or not a hack, it's an app where you, I go, okay, yeah, i got yeah, Hater's phone. Yeah, you allow, go, you allow other people to just have a voyeur view into your life. Far out. What a world we live in if that happened, right? Yeah, and then basically it's kind of like you got the, you know, people will just follow other people's phones. I think that's great. Uh, that, it's voyeuristic. It's voyeuristic, it's voyeuristic, but also too with things like Facebook and LinkedIn to a certain extent. When people take a photo and post it, it's just taking a snapshot, but it might not be the truth, right? It's like a glamorized version. Mm -hmm. So you'd probably see the real person when That's you go right. into their phone. Yeah. I like it. Or, or real person. Or the, right? the, the real person yeah, behind yeah. the mask. Once, once they've... That's it. But then they'll probably put their own spin on the person and, you know, they'll might put things in place because they know people are watching them, right? 2020, <laughs> haters watching. The app is coming out. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to finish on this one, Hater, and yeah. it's, it's one we always finish on, mm. on the LHL Story Series. When all is said and done, mm. how would you like to be remembered? Um, that's an interesting one. Mm. Uh, probably someone that, you know, respects his peers, um, treats everyone equally. And, um, you know, I don't have grand illusions of myself and I don't expect there to be statues in my place. But oh, um, like a rocky statue of Hayden. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I don't think anyone will remember it much, so I'm not too fussed. I just, I'm happy to do what I'm doing and um, if I can be remembered as someone that just did what he wanted to do then I think that's a good thing that's good Yeah, that's a nice legacy to leave yeah nice yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show Hayden. Colin, really it was an absolute it. pleasure the <laughs> pleasure was mine oh, thank you so much <laughs> and um, again we're going to come out with one of these every week if you know someone who you think you'd want to know their story please feel free to DM me um, we're going to um, be continuing this um, series of real lawyers with real stories and um, we'll see you next week everyone thank you so much mate well done <laughs>